Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Thursday edition of Video Clips. Just a couple of announcements, only a few more days. I think Mondays are cut off for ordering cookies, holiday cookies, and then that's it. We don't make them again uh, for another year. They're delicious. And remember, the more cookies you buy, the fewer I eat. So everybody turns out okay. It's all good for me. Um, but they are lovely gifts, by the way. Um, I'm wearing my new Make American Spree Again sweatshirt. Love these. Comfortable, warm. It's freezing cold outside in Columbus today, and this is nice and warm. So you should get one. Go to makeamericanspreeagain.com. We have a donate to our legal fund button on there, and you can also order um, coffee cups. I've got my uh, coffee mug, Make American Spree Again coffee mug. I've got um, all my shirts and sweatshirts and t-shirts and all that kind of great stuff. Um, we have um, just a couple more conference calls left in the in the year. I'm doing on Wednesday for Make American Spree again because Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve fall on Thursdays, and we will not have a local meeting here on uh, Thursday for those reasons. But um, and then uh, because it's coming to the end of the year, you know, people are getting ready for next year. Remember, if you want to talk to us about training to be in the business that we're in. Um, we offer the equivalent of a bachelor's degree in dietetics through our nutrition educator program and also training for a certified health educator. Uh, we have a lot of different programs. So just send me an email. I'll send you information. We can set up a time and talk. All right. So I want to talk about Winston Churchill today, one of my favorite people. And I'm going to read a little excerpt from a website that contained a whole lot of information about Churchill, and I think you'll understand the relevance to our current times as I get into this. As one of the iconic politicians of the 20th century, Churchill made his bold and overt character a fundamental component of his leadership and a symbol of the war effort, of course, World War II. With his quintessentially British appearance and demeanor, he enjoyed widespread appeal. He was often portrayed in photographs and cartoons and regularly roamed about cigar in hand, surveying the effects of German destruction. The people trusted him to protect the island, despite the frightening insecurity of World War II. At the same time, British confidence gave hope among the downtrodden and overrun countries of Europe. Churchill's stubborn unwillingness to let war disrupt normal life in England was broadly admired. Despite the many precautions required by the emergency, he himself was famously determined to maintain his day-to-day -day routine. By remaining in London whenever he expected a major raid, Churchill related to Londoners during the worst of the Blitz. There were risks associated with being a leader in the path of danger, but Churchill was unmovable, convincing the people to follow his example, whatever the horror or threat of attack. Many famous and humorous quotations exemplify for Churchill's unfaltering character. When warned by his wife and ministers of the personal risks he faced, Churchill simply replied, as a child, my nursemaid could never prevent me from taking a walk in the park when I wanted to. And as a man, Adolf Hurtley, Hitler certainly won't. His unwillingness to back down was an inspiration. The nation adopted his resolve. And I'll just pause here and hope that you're seeing the difference between this world-class leader who is a giant among men and the types of criminals and despots running our governments today, locally, at the state and local level. Churchill's physical appearance contributed to his image. In addition to his imposing figure and ever-present cigar, his dress exemplified his role in leadership. His siren suit was a personally designed kind of one-piece suit, easy to put on or take off if he wanted a siesta a habit he learned in Cuba as a young man. Adding to the fast accumulating Churchill legend, what the public called his rompers were world famous. Nor were they all utilitarian. Some siren suits were made of velvet, silk, and wool for the best parties at Downing Street. A gentleman at heart, Churchill was conscious of his public persona. While respected by aristocrats, he appealed equally to the masses, suffering under wartime shortages and rationing. The image of him working away for the country, clad in his odd yet practical outfits, appealed to the people and enhanced their trust. Supporting his image, photographs were distributed to show the public the inner workings of their leader's daily life. Photographs and cartoons and newspapers and magazines circulated widely, Churchill often displaying the V for victory sign, his signature gesture. The V sign's origins are lost in antiquity, but recently it had been said to have represented a powerful symbol of victory corresponding to the Morse code V, three dots and a dash, and the opening notes of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. 
and one photograph circulated by the Ministry of Information, Churchill strolls down Downing Street in a dark suit in Hamburg, his right arm in the air, two fingers creating the V. Through this simple gesture, Churchill displayed his optimism in a way with which people could associate, symbolizing the unwavering certainty that all will come right. Another 1940 photograph shows Churchill taking shelter from bombs during his visit to the heavily damaged city of Ramsgate. Apparently carefree, he smiles cheerfully for the camera. A protective steel helmet is strapped around his chin in place of his Homburg. Some photos show him surveying blitz damage to assure people that the government cared. A September 1940 photo captioned, Are We Downhearted? portrays Churchill, Churchill on a wrecked city street, surrounded by grinning young girls and a contingent of resolute military officers. Another shows him with the king and queen surveying the rubble of Buckingham Palace. Similar is the photo of him in the House of Commons, destroyed in the last raid of the Blitz, captioned, The Stony Path We Have to Tread. In such photos, Churchill might appear grave and serious, but never desperate or hopeless. Their effect was to demonstrate that government figures shared the dire situation as civilians. Again, I will point out the difference between this world-class leader of people and the criminals and despots in charge of our lives locally. Churchill's effort to present a positive public image was successful. Britons regarded him as a caring leader, confident yet realistic, ready for anything. The morning after the Blitz began, Samuel Battersby, a government official, accompanied him on an inspection tour, recalling a teary-eyed Churchill watching his rescuers pull civilians from the rubble of their homes. When one woman asked him, when are we going to bomb Berlin? Churchill ardently replied, you leave that to me, raising the spirits of the desperate and confused survivors. The Prime Minister, Battersby recalled, transformed an atmosphere of despondency into one of only hope in just a few words. Churchill understand how to reach out to civilians, first with sympathy, then by creating confidence. In his own recollections, he described how the people looked to him. They crowded round us, cheering and manifesting every sign of lively affection, wanting to touch and stroke my clothes. One would have thought I'd brought them some substantial benefit which would improve their lot in life. I was completely undermined and wept. Ismay, who was with me, records that he heard an old woman say, you see, he really cares, he's crying. They were tears not of sorrow, but wonder and admiration. When we got back into the car, a harsher mood swept over this haggard crowd. Give it to them back, they cried, let them have it too. I undertook forthwith to see that their wishes were carried out and this promise was certainly kept. Despite all the fame created by his image in high office, Churchill remained humble, regarding his role less as a path to glory than a necessary hardship and responsibility. Victory was the goal for the nation as a whole. And what a great man. And again, what a contrast to the uh, criminals and despots who think that the rules don't apply to them. They can travel, they can have dinner out, they can gather with their families, their incomes are secure, they're not losing anything, their businesses aren't shut down, they give nobody any comfort. They don't go out amongst the people and lead by example. They set themselves apart as rulers and criminals and despots. So would that we had somebody like Winston Churchill in charge today of this mess that we're in. In fact, we wouldn't be in this mess. And notice that during a terrible time of God, the most God awful circumstances um, you can imagine, read The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson if you haven't, people admired him. They admired him. They didn't despise him. And I think the fact that the people in charge are so despised by people is a really good sign that something is terribly, terribly, terribly wrong. So um, we need some inspiration. We need leaders of people to come forth and, um, and, and help us out of this mess. Unfortunately, we have some of those types of people. Um, but uh, again, the contrast between people who know how to lead a population through a crisis versus those who are taking advantage of a population in crisis and causing the crisis itself. All right, that's all for today. As usual, pass this on to anybody who you think would enjoy watching it and learning more about this, and I'll be back to you tomorrow with more news.